Hey guys, Scott here. Today I want to talk about my time playing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game, seeing it as how is an asymmetrical horror-based kind of chase game. Definitely is right up my alley, as I'm sure you've seen a lot of other people talking about it or playing it right now. And uh, I will say I definitely had a good time playing it. It is a lot of fun so far. Um, I want to go over the gameplay differences and I want to ask you know, and answer the burning question that every single streamer that plays this game, that plays DVD, is asked 3,000 times. Will this game kill DVD? No, this game will not kill DVD. This game is, in my opinion, the gameplay is too different. Uh, the license is too limited to have that much longevity uh, to make it last. Uh, but first, let me go over the actual gameplay flow of the game. So it's a 3v4 game. There are three killer players and four survivor players. The survivors spawn in this basement, kind of scattered uh, randomly. Usually you'll spawn next to somebody else. Uh, and the killers spawn in various places depending on which killer you are. Bubble will spawn in the basement with the survivor, so he's the closest and can start chases the quickest. Um, the hitchhiker will spawn up top outside. His role is typically to power on um, electric fences at generators and stop other forms of escape up there. And he sets traps, kind of like Trapper as well. And then there is the cook who spawns um, kind of upstairs in the house. And he's kind of in between the two. And his role is to sort of set up padlocks and also... Um, basically power up grandpa which is this uh old man in a wheelchair that you feed blood to and over time he gets stronger and stronger and provides aura reading so you can see where people are uh if they move while he's screaming and things like that um so that's how the roles of the game are now the actual gameplay itself it depends sort of which killer you're playing but for the most part it's going to involve you running behind people and pressing m1 to down them now leatherface can rev his chainsaw and raise it up into the air to do bonus damage. Uh, and also he moves faster forward, kind of like a minor hillbilly sprint. So it's it's pretty similar to his DBD uh, component there. And um, you can also overheat the saw if you hold it too long. So that's kind of fun to use. Um, but for the most part, every one of the killers, you still have to kill the survivors. Now, they all have various methods of doing that. The hitchhiker, for example, is relentless, and he can sort of go where survivors go. There are little like holes in the wall and like little vaults that normally um, killers can't do, but the hitchhiker is basically the agile one that can track people through that. And frankly, it's pretty much impossible to get away from a hitchhiker that wants to keep chasing you. Um, every time I played as a hitchhiker, a survivor was never able to actually escape barring one particular type of exit uh, on the top floor outside. There's a well you can drop down and killers can't follow you through that. Uh, there's also one uh, type of vault where it's like there's barbed wire above you and you have to go under it. And for that, the hitchhiker is unable to go through, but Bubba can chainsaw that entire thing like breaking a pallet. So each killers have their various strengths of chasing, except Cook. Cook has basically nothing. Um, There's a reason everyone dodges Cook when they get him in the lobby, because your role is assigned when you join. And I don't believe it's going to be like that for the real game, but for the technical test, yeah, Cook is very boring because he is the support class. His ability is basically being able to hear people through walls and you can pinpoint their location and actually see their aura through walls which sounds really good except it doesn't show it to your teammates so you have no way of telling people the information you got unless you're using voice comms and i think any character that requires voice comms with other people that have voice comms on to get your information across is just going to not work super well now you can type in text chat but it's kind of frustrating if you try to chase somebody and you're having to type at the same it doesn't really work um, Cook is extremely slow. His stamina runs out super fast. You can't chase people even in a straight line. They'll just outrun you. So his whole kind of support play style is, I found, really boring. And honestly, I think everyone else finds it boring too. Because every time I join a lobby, I see someone in the Cook role. They just leave and join a new lobby trying to get the Hitchhiker or Leatherface, which were both admittedly very fun to play. Now on the Survivor side, I, uh, I've only played a few hours of Survivor. I'm going to play more today. Or at least I'm planning on playing more today. Uh, on the survivor side, you basically spawn on a hook, or you're tied up, you're not on a hook, and then you have to get down, you have to find a blue toolbox with an unlocking tool, you bring that unlocking tool to one of the four basement escapes, then once you're out of the basement, you're in this house right here, uh, then once you're in the house, you need to get out of the house, or there's uh, there's basically four methods of escaping, there's like this valve uh, water pump thing you can do, there's a fuse box you can do, or there's just simply two exits on both sides, and the killers are going to try to, you know, stop you from from getting there. I honestly found the victim gameplay more uh, engaging and different. And it's kind of a weird dichotomy to Dead by Daylight because in DBD, you know, killer is the role you play when you don't care about coordination and communication. But in this game, 
killer actually requires the most coordination and communication and i'd argue survivor doesn't really require much at all it's sort of an every man for himself type thing and honestly grouping up a survivor in this game doesn't offer you much of anything in fact it just makes you weaker spreading out is the main thing that you want to do as survivor um so yeah it, killer is really the team-based role in this game and survivor is just sort of just fend for yourself um but it leads to very silly scenarios if people die early um you're you're pretty much just screwed as survivor there's no hatch mechanic if you have two of your teammates dead before you get out of the basement you're pretty screwed because you're gonna have one guy aura reading you which is the cook and even though he can't do much he can at very least just chase you menacingly and stop you from doing any objectives so you just eventually die. Um, so when, when the numbers get down to like, you know, only one or two survivors left, I found it basically impossible to escape unless someone had previously already uh, disabled a generator, at which point you can just run out. But if you're the one that has to do that role, you're, you can't really win at that point. So that's probably something that they need to try to address, give you some type of thing. Because if you have a character that's got near permanent aura reading, um, and although you can walk and minimize the sounds you make, eventually you have to make sound at something and he's going to see you and you have, like, powering on generators can take quite some time. Unlocking things takes quite some time unless you're Connie. And so, um, it puts you in this scenario where it's very, very hard to win when you're, you know, one of two people left. Um, there's also frustrating scenarios when you're playing killer as well because there are genuine infinites in this game. If you don't play Dead by Daylight, an infinite is basically a loop that you can keep somebody at forever and the killer can never actually hit you. Because you can always, you know, in DBD, you would vault over a pallet. Basically, imagine there's a loop with a pallet that can't be broken. And there's a couple of these setups in the game where it's physically impossible to catch a survivor. As a survivor, I was doing this for someone for like 10 minutes and they just couldn't do anything. Until eventually, and here's where it's not as big of a problem in DBD, one of their teammates came and just cornered me. And then I was fucked because it's a 2v1 and I can't go both exits. So, um, you actually have to combat the frankly unfair loops in this game by having teammates come over there. And once they do, they're nothing. And of course, they, they, you just go down immediately because now there's two people chasing you. But it's a trade-off because at the same time, now there's only one other killer to pressure three other survivors. So devoting your time to downing someone at one of these loops, um, while it guarantees you a down, it also makes it so the other three survivors are just able to do whatever they want. So that makes it a bit riskier as well. And you got to kind of juggle that. And that's why it's a lot of teamwork required for killer and why I think killer is... Honestly, a more frustrating role because when I play games like this, I don't want to rely on teammates. That's why I like Killer in Dead by Daylight. I just jump on that. Everything I do is my fault. Everything's under my control. As Survivor, it's usually just kind of up to you as well. Yes, it's nice if someone turns uh, off a generator for you and stuff like that. And that's great. But for the most part, you're kind of doing your own thing. Whereas Killer, I mean, I found as Bubba, the best strat was to follow Cook because Cook is the one that can hear things and find where people are. And so you want to kind of track your teammate who can see people and trust that they know what they're doing and trust that they're leading you to something like a dog. And a lot of the time that worked out for me when I was playing on Killer, there was no communication because I turned off voice chat for streaming purposes, just for this test anyway. And I followed Cook around and was able to find people because he could find people. And that ended up being a good idea. But again, at the same time, then we're not splitting up and there's three other survivors running around doing whatever. And that can be kind of a problem. Um, so let's go to the whole, is it a DVD killer question and things like that. No, I don't think this game is built to counter DVD. In fact, the gameplay is too different to Dead by Daylight, despite the fact that it's an asymmetrical horror game. The gameplay is kind of different from DVD. It is definitely more stealth oriented. Um, and it's also very, uh, voice chat heavy. Uh, at least right now, maybe they'll change this when the game comes out, but right now it's very voice chat heavy. And I think games that rely on voice chat, like being nearly necessary are, um, fairly frustrating to play sometimes. So I am a little worried about that aspect of it, but in terms of the actual longevity of the game, I just, I can't see it lasting nearly as long as Dead by Daylight. And I think that's okay. I don't think the devs are trying to do that. Every time they make a game like this, they're like, oh, this game's not going to last. And I bet the devs are like, yeah, no shit. It's not supposed to last that long. Like, I, I I don't think they went into it trying to kill DVD or anything like that. It just didn't seem like that type of game. What it does seem like is a just stupid fun party game to play with your friends. Because it is a lot of fun when you do that. It's like Friday the 13th. It's exactly like Friday the 13th. The more I play it, it really just feels like the same game with a fresh coat of paint and a, a little bit more quality of life and better features. Um, honestly, I found less bugs too, because that game was buggy as all hell. So... If you like Friday the 13th, you will absolutely love this game. If you didn't like that game, you will not like this game. It's pretty much that simple. Um, and the thing about Friday the 13th is the game did not last very long because it's not 
there's only so much you can do with a single license. Like, yeah, you can have other characters from the movies and stuff like that, but there's, there's just only so much you can do. You are limited at a certain point when it's not a Smash Mother or Brothers type game. Smash Mothers, that's a that's a new game that I'm sure people want to play. Um, if it's not a Smash Brothers type game where you can pull in IPs from anywhere and have just a crazy amount of stuff, it's just, it can't possibly last no matter how much love they give to it. There's just a, an eventual limit that they're going to hit. And Friday the 13th hit that as well. I think people misremember how popular that game was. Um, it had like 16,000 players at its peak. For example, DVD has 30,000 players on its lowest point, right? Not its lowest point, but lowest point in many years. So um, Friday the 13th had 16,000 players like, you know, a month after it came out. But then two months later, it was down to 2,000 players. Like the game dropped off really fast. And people go, well, the lawsuit made it impossible. For yeah, but that didn't happen until like June of 2018. And it came out in 2017. So it, it died, w I can't say it died, it became way less popular very, very quickly upon release. And that's because there was just a limited amount of things that you could do in the game. It doesn't seem to have as much of a skill cap as DBD. I know we all make the joke, DBD has no skill, or no, the skill ceiling is very low, it's very easy to master the game. But frankly, it isn't. There's just, you know, so, just so much content in the game that learning how to play every killer and learning how to go against every killer is much more of a monumental undertaking than, you know, gameplay like this. Now, again, DVD released with only a couple of killers. So comparing release this game to release DVD is more fair because comparing release this game to current DVD, it's, it's got seven years of work behind it. Of course, it's not fair. But my point is this game will not last seven years. It's not going to ever be able to get to that point. Pretty much 100% sure of that because not because I don't think the devs are talented or they've done a good job here. I think it's just physically impossible because they're limited by the license that they have. There's only so much you can do. Um, that's not the fault of the devs. That's just the fault of the license itself. Um, other than that, I think it's a, it's going to be a really fun distraction for a couple of months. And I think that's really kind of all they're going for. It's going to be a great game to play with your friends if you're looking for a very low stakes, fun, genuine party game. Um, this is going to be a very good time for a lot of people. I had a lot of fun playing it, and I'm going to probably continue playing it for all the technical tests because it is a good time. It's a welcome distraction from DVD. Um, but if you're concerned that it's going to be a DVD killer, no, it's not even structured to be like that. Um, I'm sure it's going to get a lot of updates over the years and stuff like that, but it's not going to, it's not, it's not built for that. So it's get that out of your head. There's virtually no chance that this game would overtake DVD. It's just going to be a fun side distraction for quite some time and I wish it all the success in the world because it's a great time and I definitely recommend you check it out um at least for a little while because it is a really good time thanks for watching see you next time